today's session will be welcomed and you will be welcomed and introduced by to MIS by our head of school, Mr. Timothy Thomas. And you will also have the opportunity to meet our junior, middle and senior school principal, as well as our deputy head of school, Mr. Oliver Hartwright. And we have a special guest today joining us, Will White, a student in our grade 10. Please feel free to start posting your questions into the chat now, and we will try to answer as many of them straight away. Right now, it's my pleasure to be able to introduce and hand over to our head of school, uh, Mr. Timothy Thomas. So, thank you very much, Lee Kim, for the introduction, and welcome, everybody. We are so pleased that you're joining us today. We just love to share about our school. My name is Tim Thomas, and I'm the head of school here at Munich International School. I'm in my 10th year at the school. I am originally a U.S. American, but I attended school in Germany. I attended a university in Germany, and I've been living in Germany now for 21 years. And it's an extreme privilege of mine to be at this really wonderful school, and it's also my privilege to share a bit about that school with you today. So I am going to show just a couple of slides um, and share some information. I'm going to go quite It'll be a quick overview, but if there's anything that you have questions about, please feel very welcome to your questions in the chat, and we can drill a little bit more deeply into any of the issues that you're hearing about. So it will take me just a moment to start those slides. Look for my desktop. When you hear about Munich International School, I think you'll often hear uh, three words that along with the three words in our title, and those are nurture, challenge, and inspire. Um, and these are words that came about through a community process where we really wanted to think about what should our school do for every student who comes through our door. Um, and our community really coalesced around these three verbs that talk do, and that is to nurture every student, to challenge every student, and to inspire every student. Um, here's a picture of the building our school started, um, at least at the site back in 1968. We refer to this as our Schloss, our, our castle. Um, but today there are mostly administrative offices in this building and we have six other purpose-built buildings where you'll find our preschool and our grades 1 through 12. So today I'd like to share a little bit with you about the fact that we are a leading international baccalaureate world school and I'll tell you a little bit about what that means. I'd like to share a little bit about our academic results. I'd like to talk about our holistic values-based learning environment. I'd like to talk a little bit about warm, welcoming international community and share a few pictures and a little bit of information about beautiful, secure, modern, state-of-the-art facilities. So I think we have to start when we talk about any school by talking about the teacher. I think the quality of any school is really dependent on the quality of the teaching and learning and the quality of the people who are privileged to work with your children um, through a very important phase of their lives. So at our school, we have a very clear profile. When we are looking to recruit teachers from Munich International School, we are looking for teachers who are caring, first and foremost, who are highly competent in their area of expertise, who are committed to the success of every student in their care, who are culturally respectful, that goes along with being an international school, and who are happy, positive people who make learning enjoyable for their students and for themselves. And I think that if you come to our school, you'll find that our teachers very much embody these characteristics. And this is the experience of our students as they make their way through our school. So I'd also like to share a little bit about our academic results, a, little, a few numbers. So we had a group of over 100 students who graduated in 2022 and received their international baccalaureate diplomas. So those students had an average IB diploma score of 37 out of a highest possible score of 45. And to give you an idea how that compares around the world, the global average score at IB schools was 32 out of 45. So 37 is a very high average, particularly for a non-selective school. So we are not a school that takes in only the most highly academically capable students. Instead, we are a fairly open enrollment school that takes um, students from all kinds of backgrounds. And so to be able to nurture those students to achieve an average of 37 points in the IB diploma is really something special. 
This last year, we had three students who got a perfect score of 45 points in their IB diploma. 19 of the students scored 42 or above. And to give you a sense, in the German system, 42 points in the IB is a Durchschnittsnote im Abitur of 1.0. So it's the very highest score you can get. And this qualifies students to, to study at even the very most selective universities around the world. Now we achieved that average, even though 100% of our students passed the full IB diploma. So every student who attempted the full diploma also was successful. And that compares to a global pass rate of about 82%. We also have a qualification that students complete at the end of grade 10, so two years earlier. Now, almost all of these students will go on to complete the full IB diploma as well, but it gives them an intermediate qualification that they complete at the end of grade 10, which is comparable, for example, in the UK to the IGCSEs, and in Germany recognized as the Mittlere Reife. And that's called the MYP E assessment. And our students did very well last year. So last year's group scored an average of 43.9 points at a high of 54. The global average at MYP schools was 30.7. So you can see again, our students score um, a high, well above averages, even though we have a very general admissions policy. So 94% of the students completed the full MYP diploma. That compares to a global pass rate in that diploma of 80%. And just to repeat, if you get the MYP certificate, that is recognized in Germany as equivalent to the Mittlerreife, which allows students who um, want to use that qualification for anything here in Germany to be able to do that. So, but we're not all about and we're not all about academic learning. Our school puts a lot of time and effort and energy into our co-curricular programming. So what that means is that, for example, within the daily schedule, all of our students have classes in visual arts, drama, music, and in the senior school, even in film. And then beyond the regular day, students have an opportunity to join up to 60 different activities that are taking place in each of three different seasons. So 60 activities taking place in autumn, 60 in winter, and 60 in spring. This includes all kinds of activities like musical activities, we have a string, quartets, we have choirs, bands, and an orchestra. In athletics, we have many different sporting activities that students can participate in like football, volleyball, country, tennis, rugby, track and field. And we have lots of high interest activities like sailing on Stromberg See, rowing, tree climbing, nature skills, ballet, pottery, computer coding, robotics, and many more. So our students have a lot of options at the end of the day. So many of our students will come in the morning, will join their normal classes. They will have a day of academic classes with also will participate in the arts and in other kinds of innovative classes. And then at the end, day at three or four o'clock, they have the opportunity to join in these extracurricular activities. So I'd also like to share very quickly a little bit about who we are as a community. So our school is 56 years old. So we've been around for a while. It's the Munich International School. We have approximately 1,250 students. And this year, those students are coming from 72 different countries. We have approximately 230 faculty and staff. They come from 27 different countries, so it's a very international space. Munich International School, EV, so EV, that means that we are a not-for-profit association. And that means that our parents, if you join Munich International School, then you actually become an association member. And so you actually become a part of the ownership of the school. And the parents elect a parent-elected board, and that board is the governing body for Munich International School. We also have a very active PTV, Parent Teacher Verein. This is a separate association, but it's a support association that helps the school in so many ways. So the PTV will organize a number of activities for families who are moving to the area. So they do a number of things to help new families oriented in Bavaria. Um, they'll also run all kinds of activities at school. So in just a couple of weeks, we will have Halloween parties that are organized by the PTV, but they organize a broad range of things for the school. The MIS Foundation is another association, and that brings um, artists and other kinds of professionals and speakers to the school to work directly in a hands-on way with our students. The MIS Sportverein is another association that works with us, and this helps us to integrate into the local community by allowing our students to participate in all kinds of sports with local sports associations. 
The Tanzania Project is a service project that's been going on at our school for over 30 years. We have an association with a, a region in Tanzania where we support hospitals, schools, orphanages, and a medical center. And every year, our students in grade 10 and 11 have the opportunity to travel to Tanzania to bring supplies with them, to work on some of the projects, and to learn about um, the work that we're doing there. And finally, we have an MIS Alumni and Friends Association. So if you become a part of MIS, when you leave, either by graduating or if you move on to another place, then you're a part of our worldwide network of alumni and friends. And this allows you to track other MIS alumni who may have the same place. So if after Munich, you end up moving on to Moscow or Melbourne, then you can find other MIS alumni who were there and perhaps connect and maybe have friends around before your plane even touches down. So here's an aerial view of our campus. We're very fortunate to have a beautiful campus that's just outside of Barrick, which is about 15 kilometers south of Munich. As you can see there, we're right on the edge of and we have a lot of space to use with our students in a number of ways. So we have a 25 acres of play spaces, athletic fields, and nature paths. This is a really wonderful thing that allows our students to spend a lot of time outdoors. We have an Olympic-sized eight-lane track and field complex. We have a quadruple sports hall with dance studio and fitness center that just came, um, was just finished for the year. We have a performing arts center. We have a maker's laboratory and makerspace for the students. We have innovative science and technology laboratories. We have a full service cafeteria with a kitchen here on campus where fresh organic meals are prepared. Our own transportation services that are run by a full-time director of transportation right here on campus. <clears throat> So also quickly, I wanted to share just a little bit about our strategic developments. So our school is constantly seeking to improve. And this year, some of the ways that we're seeking to do that are by expanding our student life program. So we're really fortunate to have mountains right here at our doorstep. We can see the Alps right from our school. We have uh, glacial lakes that are right here close to the school. And the forest comes almost all the way up to the campus. So we're really looking at ways that students can advantage of our location and use the mountains, the lakes, and the forest to make their learning experience here at school even more um, inspirational. We're also looking at implementing universal design for learning across the school. This is an approach in the classroom that asks teachers to think about the backgrounds of all of their students and to ensure that when they come into the classroom prepared to teach, that they've thought about what every student in that class is going to need in order to be successful. And this includes students who are gifted, it includes students who have various backgrounds coming from different countries, and it just includes their interests and their level of progress in various academic fields. We're currently looking at developing our coding, computing, and structured thinking curriculum across the school. We're looking at more ways of having students provide feedback to their teachers on how effective their learning experiences are. We're looking at further enhancing our links to the real world, and this means taking our students out into the real world more often and also inviting people from the world into our school to work with our students. And just basically, we're looking at how we can make school feel important, relevant, meaningful, and manageable for all of our students, because we believe that's going to lead to their success. So a final thing for me, people often ask why I think they should bring their children to MIS. And so just very quickly, I would say, I really appreciate that our school is a place where we integrate students' individual interests, needs, and goals into their learning. So students have an opportunity here to really influence what their learning looks like, and that allows it to feel very relevant and important to them, which I think is something that's very important for learning. We have outstanding teachers, many of whom are authors, examiners, curriculum leaders, and workshop leaders for the IB. We have an engaging future-oriented curriculum that includes inquiry, technology, making, innovation, and multimodal literacies. It's a holistic education. We have social and emotional learning embedded throughout our curriculum, we include the arts, creativity, innovation, and inquiry into all parts of our school. We have a wonderful 25-acre campus, which if you could visit in person, will just really make you feel a sense of awe. And it's a welcoming, truly international community. So these are some of the things that I think are the best parts of MIS. So that was very quick. I know, I hope that you were able to follow along and I hope it was also able to inspire some questions from you. Bring down these slides. Great. So 
As I said, please feel welcome to ask any questions either during the presentation or afterwards. At this time, I would like to hand on to our uh, junior school principal, Mr. David Freed. Great, thank you very much, Tim. That definitely gave a good overview and a broad understanding of our uh, school in general. I'd like to talk a little bit about the junior school, which uh, for us here means our students who are ages four, five, six, so in our early childhood, all the way up through grade four. Uh, firstly though, um, my name again is David Freed. I'm an American. I've uh, now in my 11th year here at MIS and I've lived and worked in public and private schools, both in Spain and the United States. Uh, the junior school MIS's PYP program is uh, a real gem. It's one of a thousand PYP schools around the world uh, to provide an education of the highest caliber. Uh, many of the teachers in the junior school are involved in the development of the program globally. We have curriculum writers in our school. We actually next week will be visited uh, by two international schools who will be coming to us to learn about our program. Uh, so we're truly a world leader in developing our program. Uh, while the PYP program is certainly a rigorous program academically, it truly provides a, a well-rounded education for students so they can throughout the day uh, attend lessons in German, art, music, physical education to have a chance to develop their whole selves. It's truly a unique experience and all of our students can access the curriculum. Uh, many, most often in different grade levels, uh, come into our school as English as additional language students. These are students who are learning English as an additional language. Some of them come in the door with virtually no English, and that's fine. All of our teachers are prepared to uh, teach the content in ways that can help our students understand the content. We also have EAL, or English as Additional Language Specialist, at every grade level to prepare our students and to help them. We also have a very robust program of learning support. Uh, and this is additional support for students who may need a little extra budge or nudge uh, to develop their reading and mathematics skills and writing skills. So uh, we often provide support in the classroom with an additional teacher. We also provide small group and even one-to-one -one help as needed. Um, on our campus at all times uh, as well, we have at least one full-time certified nurse to provide medical care for students, but also advice, uh, not just to our students, but to our staff and to our families. That's been a wonderful resource for many of us. Um, our school also benefits in the junior school from having an extended day. Uh, you heard from uh, Mr. Thomas related to our student life program. We also have students who in the junior school continue their day through the after school care program or the EC extended a day to play, to participate in activities. And it also allows them to take a bus home at later in the day. I'll um, uh, talk to you a little bit later in this presentation with Mr. Hartwright related to our student life program and all of the activities. So I'll, I'll hold that for now. Uh, but as you can see from the picture behind me, uh, but also through the video and perhaps in a visit, our park-like campus really makes our school come alive. Our students love the playgrounds, the, the ability to be out and about in the sandboxes and throughout the school. So it's truly a unique experience for our children. Um, something else that's very important in our school and what we believe strongly in is working as partners, uh, working uh, as partners with parents and in the community. And we do that through many different ways. Most importantly is through good solid communication. Uh, especially for our new families who come into school. We want to make sure that all of our families and all of our parents understand our program, uh, are kept up to date on activities, and student work uh, is also shared through a program called Seesaw. It's very much like an online portfolio to allow parents sort of a window into their child's learning. Really a unique experience. Some other things that we offer in the junior school, we have monthly parent principal forums. This is an opportunity for parents to come in and learn about our program. Uh, just yesterday, we hosted a one active or one parent principal forum on social emotional learning and what that program looks like in our classrooms. Uh, in the future, we'll be sharing with parents how we teach mathematics, how we teach language and literacy, any number of topics that are important to our parent community. I also host monthly principals coffees, trying to have an open door. It's a very informal gathering, just a chance for parents to come in, meet other parents, but also a chance for me to find out what questions and concerns may be on parents' minds. Um, I think something that's um, truly remarkable, remarkable about our school 
just the quality of the teachers. Uh, as Mr. Thomas highlighted in his presentation, it's uh, truly a group of highly committed, hardworking and caring teachers that really make a difference for our students. On top of that, we also have a full-time assistant principal who oversees the academic, uh, social and emotional progress of our students and can work with parents to relay any concerns and to support children to reach their full potential. We also have a curriculum coordinator who meets regularly with the teachers to ensure that our instruction and our assessments are well aligned to the PYP program. And we have a school counselor available who goes into all of the classrooms and works with all of our students to support their development and can also be a great resource for parents in our community as well. So as I like to say, there's uh, something for everyone uh, at MIS and especially in the junior school for our little people. And I'm happy to answer other questions uh, as they come about. Um, uh, at this point, I would like to introduce um, Oliver Hartwright, and I'm going to uh, have the opportunity to talk to Oliver about our student life program, and there he is. So, um, Oliver, would you like to take a moment and introduce yourself first, though? Of course. Thank you, David. Uh, good morning or good afternoon to everyone, depending on where you are located at the moment. Um, my name is Oliver Hartwright. I'm the deputy head of school. It's my third year at MIS, and I'm a uh, British citizen and I also hold German nationality with parents born in both countries. This is, uh, as David was saying, was a truly outstanding school and uh, very much welcome the opportunity to talk to you about our co-curricular program today. Very good. Thank you, Oliver. Maybe you can just start off and uh, give a broad a brush description of our student life program and uh, what's available to our community. Absolutely. Um, so to us at MIS, as Tim was saying at the start, um, our mission is to nurture, to challenge and inspire children. And that's really reflected across our student life program, uh, particularly in terms of the choice for students. We use the term student life to include all aspects that are beyond our um, more uh, traditional core curriculum program that runs between nine and four during the day. And this could be in other schools, you might be familiar with school sports, after school activities. You may also be familiar with arts programs like music. And these are all really important for us. And we see that for students, they require choice because all of our students are very different in their backgrounds and in their interests. And so therefore we bring them together in one program called the Student Life Program. And this allows our students, particularly our younger students, to have a broad range of exposure to different activities, but also the opportunity for our older students to specialize in particular areas of interest that they have. And some of the things that you'll see that are quite different at MIS is you'll see our focus on the forest, lake and mountains that Tim was talking about, um, structures that support that. For instance, like we have our own sports club, our sport Verein, which is run by parents within our association. That means that our students can play and compete in local leagues as well as in uh, against other international schools. We have a program of after school care, particularly for our youngest students in the uh, preschool and junior school, where many of them participate heavily in the after school program through this student life program. Uh, we have an individualized music tuition program that operates through um, uh, through the school before after school and during the school day as well. And perhaps most importantly about our student life program is we have a very inclusive approach towards it. So for instance, when it comes to most of our program, you will hear that we describe it as a try it rather than a try out phase in the first week because we want students to opt into things. We don't cut students from teams. We want everyone to be able to be competitive and to engage in the activities that are important to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly I can. Um commend all of the leaders because as exciting as we make our school day during the day, uh, they, uh, our students certainly love and look forward to the after school programs and the student life uh, options available to them. Um, maybe Oliver, you could describe or highlight what do you think some of the benefits to the students are in their participation in these activities? Yeah, the, the benefits are really multifaceted. One of the things that would um, which strike me first is the learning skills, specific skills. So for instance, our students in our gymnastics program are developing a lot of core motor skills in those times. And we can see that expressed in fine motor skills as well in other aspects of our student life program, whether it would be within the fine arts as well, within our drawing uh, com uh, uh, activities. 
And we can see that students develop very specific skills in areas that they're interested in as well, whether it would be, for instance, in our individualized music tuition program, in our students who are performing uh, at very high levels in um, music. We also have a very strong focus on approaches to learning, the attitudes that you develop through your learning in the student life program. For instance, perseverance is a really important attribute to develop in our um, students, and we see that through our student life program. For instance, in the sporting side, when challenges, when teams are facing challenges or they are not performing as expected, how do they get through those challenges? How do they perform better? How are they going to be able to make the most of victory and defeat in their competitions? How do they learn to manage those emotions? Those are very important for them. Curiosity is very important for students, so we want them to expose themselves to different kinds of areas of learning, and whether they are engaged in Minecraft or whether they're involved in the Strings program, Dungeons and Dragons, Florist Explorers, or gymnastics or volleyball. We want them to be engaged in different areas and learning about themselves and their interests in those ways. And finally, I think I'd say one of the key benefits is joy um, for young uh, uh, adults and children, the joy of being involved in their interests after school with their friends, lots of movement, lots of choice for them to choose the things that they're really interested in, especially the activities and many activities that have begun at MIS through requests and, and direction from students with their voice heavily involved. There's a real variety of activities and they're inclusive, which I think brings a lot of happiness to students. Definitely, I can second that. Thank you, Oliver, for your time and for your support of the program. I appreciate that very much. I think, and now we're going to um, transition to our middle school. And I have the pleasure to introduce Natalie Millett, who is our middle school principal. Natalie, take it away. Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Natalie Millette, and uh, I'm I have the wonderful pleasure of being the middle school principal. This is my first year in the role of middle school principal, and uh, it has been an amazing um, journey so far. And so I'm really, really pleased to have the opportunity to tell you a little bit of today about uh, our middle school. First, a little bit about me. I am Canadian. Um, I worked for over 20 years in uh, private schools in Canada, where I was uh, originally a history teacher, and I also taught geography and uh, many other subjects related to the social sciences as well as English. I taught uh, history and geography in both French and English. Um, and I also had the opportunity to work as a curriculum coordinator and director of teaching and learning. My most recent position was actually in Hong Kong. I was at the Canadian International School of Hong Kong for three years where I uh, developed a unique middle school program for them, which focused on the transition from elementary into secondary school. And that is what I bring to uh, the MIS middle school, um, where we have about 400 students uh, in grades five to eight. And we really recognize that this is a pivotal time for students, as I was saying a moment ago, uh, because it highlights that period of transition. And so we really take the time to think about what do students need at this age and stage in their development in order to become the independent, confident, uh, engaged students that will allow them to tackle the, the sophisticated, challenging material that the MYP and the IB uh, diploma programs require um, of our students. And so in the middle school, we really focus on three key attributes to help students to be successful during this time of transition. First, we want every student to feel a real sense of belonging because we know that students learn better when they feel a strong, positive connection to their teachers as well as to their peers. So um, having that sense of connection, having a relationship with both teachers and classmates allows students to feel confident uh, and that allows them to take the risk that is associated with learning new material. 
And so we spent a lot of time in our program and thinking about what do we need to do to ensure that our students feel that strong sense of connection, both with people who they already know, so friends from uh, previous grades, but also with new people. Because one of the transitions that happens as we uh, grow into adolescence is that we need to learn how to meet new people and make new friends. And so we spend a lot of time on that. Secondly, we focus on learning how to learn, not just the what, but actually before the what, how we learn. And one of the things that we support students in is understanding how they as a unique individual learner learn best and recognizing that not all students will learn in the same way and that one individual student may require a uh, specific skill set to learn in one subject, but require a different set of strategies to support them in other subjects. So our teachers embed into their teaching uh, a, a, a real emphasis on what is it that they need to do in a particular time and in a particular situation in order to foster their learning. And all of this is looking forward to the goal of becoming independent learners. We do not expect students in grade five or six to be independent learners. We don't even expect students at the end of grade eight to be independent, but we want them to take the steps that are required to continue their trajectory towards independence. And so the teachers will provide students with incremental uh, challenges so that they can learn all of those skills that you and I have developed over the course of um, our studies and our careers. So for example, we want students to uh, have, have strong organizational skills. We want them to have be good time managers, to be critical thinkers, to know how to do research, to be able to advocate for themselves. Um, we want them to ask good, hard questions so that again, they know what they need to do so that they can learn well. And finally, we want our students to develop a sense of who they are as individuals. We know that this is a time, that sort of period in pre-adolescence, where there is a lot of growth, physical, personal, social growth and changes that require uh, students to really think about who they are and who they want to be, to think about what are their personal attributes, the things that they're really proud of, and the things that they want to continue to develop. We also want to challenge them to try new things. Uh, we want them, we want to put them in unfamiliar uh, new situations so that they can discover for themselves uh, new interests, things that they thought maybe they didn't like that now maybe they do like. And so, um, you know, we do this so that we can encourage them to develop those personal qualities and those characteristics that will allow them to continue to be um, interesting people who are going to continue to be lifelong learners. So starting in grade five, our students begin the uh, middle years program, which is part of the uh, international baccalaureate. Students study standalone subjects, so mathematics, science, individuals and societies. However, the link in all of those subjects is that they focus on real world connections and real world applications. Again, we know that at this age and uh, excuse me, at this stage in development, Students learn best when they can see themselves reflected in the curriculum and when they can begin to consider differing perspectives. And so while they have their own perspective and their own opinion, we challenge them to broaden their thinking by giving them other perspectives or other unique lived experiences, but they are all couched in real world applications. Uh, and again, the goal is for our students to consider their current place in their world and the, their future place in the world and how they can become positive, engaged global citizens. All of our students will continue their learning uh, in both English and German as either a mother tongue or an additional language. And starting in grade six, students have the opportunity to add a third language and they can choose from either Spanish, uh, Mandarin, or French. 
Um, in addition to that, they take design in which they learn to apply the design cycle uh, in product design, food design, as well as digital design. And all of our students also learn about digital responsibility. So students here starting in grade five um, learn with an iPad um, and they learn how to use this device um, as a support for their learning. So we're really teaching them the responsibilities behind having some technology. Um, our MYP program really does focus on authentic learning for middle school students. We want to make learning fun so that students remain engaged and motivated um, and challenge themselves to um, progress continuously. We have a very strong learning support program. I believe strongly that uh, learning support is actually in middle school required for all students. All students need to figure out where their strengths lie so that they can rely on those strengths but also the areas that might be a little bit more challenging for them. And we've all got them. And so we need to be able to identify what are those challenges so that uh, we can work on them, we can try to improve them, and also we can build other skills to help to support us uh, through our challenges. So our learning support teachers are available both in the regular classroom and also meeting individually with students to meet uh, their individual needs. And similarly, we also have a great team of English language learning teachers who go into class to support students who may not be learning in their uh, mother tongue. Um, our students also benefit just as um, David and Oliver were talking about, about this incredible campus. Uh, they have so much space to run around and have fun. We really do believe in play and in giving students intentional breaks in their learning so that they can come back into the classroom ready to learn. Um, we place a lot of emphasis on working collaboratively with families. Um, our teachers are highly communicative. Uh, we believe that that partnership between home and school is really important at this age in order to support students in becoming slightly more independent in their learning so that they need to rely a little bit less on mom and dad and can uh, advocate for themselves. Um, we also have a really great team of uh, professionals in addition to our uh, team of teachers. Uh, I have a, an assistant principal who supports students daily as well as a dedicated guidance counselor who enters classes to uh, speak with students about issues that pertain to, um, to development and learning to be a teenager, um, as well as meeting students one-on-one uh, -on -one to talk about um, whatever they might need to talk about. So I'm going to end it there. Um, there's so much that I can say about the, the really great work that is done in the middle school. I do wanna let you know that if at any point you have any questions um, at all about the middle school, please feel free to reach out to me and um, I look forward to, to hearing from you soon. And I will pass it on now to the principal of the senior school, Mr. Anders Carlson, who will tell you about the um, upper school. Thank you, Natalie. My name is Anders Carlson. I have been at MIS for 10 years. And um, before that, I worked in various places. I worked in London, I worked in Sweden, and I'm Swedish. I worked in Brussels, I worked in, in uh, Nairobi. Uh, but, uh, and they were all great places, but this one, this school is the very best of all. So uh, senior school is grade uh, nine up till 12. And it, had, it has two parts or two entities. Grade nine and 10 is still within the MYP. And uh, grade 11 and 12 is the diploma program. In grade nine and 10, of course, students study the, the, uh, the course subjects, English, math, German, uh, science, humanities, PE. But then they can also choose amongst a large number of electives. So we have French, Spanish, Mandarin, arts, drama, music design coding you can do another uh, humanities you can do uh, a second science and we also offer a special course uh, in german uh, politics uh, at the end of grade 10 students sit external exams organized by the ib 
they're called e-assessments. And uh, if someone would like to have the Mittlere Schulabschluss, you get it through these exams. In grade 11 and 12, students do six subjects. I mean, in, in the German system, you do more, but in some other systems, you do fewer subjects. So the IB is something in between here. And we have, since we are quite a large IB school, we have many subjects on offer. Uh, in total, we have uh, 20, 26 subjects, and they can be done on higher level or standard level. So in total, 52 courses. At the end of grade 12, students sit external exams organized by the IB. And through these exams, you are elig eligible to any university in the world, including German universities. So the IB is then equivalent with the Abitur. Um, Tom, uh, Tim Thomas talked about our teachers, and uh, I and and I would just agree that that's our main. Uh, they are the most important people here, of course. That most of them are from the United States or from the UK, but also from from some other countries. Uh, I, and it, there was also a mention of after school activities. We always say to new students they should join these because they will set settle in quicker and uh, they will be part of the community. Now, uh, I'm going to talk a bit to one of our students in grade 10. It's His name is William White. Uh, William has been at our school for a while. Uh, he's from Britain. And so, hello, William. Can you can you say something so we can hear? Hello, yes. OK, good. Hi. Um, um, so everyone, I'm Will White. And so as he mentioned, I'm from the UK. So my parents are originally from the UK. However, I was born in Los Angeles. So I was very lucky to have that um, have that possibility to be born in a different country. I'm very lucky for that. And so I arrived at MIS in third grade. So and I'm currently in 10th grade. So this will be my eighth year at MIS. And so far, I've really enjoyed it. And I've had the privilege of being in the junior school, the middle school, and even the senior school. So that's very lucky. And I've really enjoyed my time over at MIS so far. And you said you came in grade three. What was that like when you came new, only nine years old, I guess? Tell mm -hmm. us about that. What, what do you remember from well, that? Yes, yeah, so I remember moving. I was so excited to move to this new country known as Germany. And so when I arrived here, I remember being dropped into this classroom in third grade. And I remember just, again, so lucky in this international school, being able to mix with so many different um, cultures and nationalities. And I remember trying to find friends on the first day. I remember my third grade teacher brought me to the, the lunch line and he was talking to a group of boys. And he said, can you guys take Will with you today? He played football for a club in Los Angeles. And straight away, I can see in their faces that they were very impressed by this because obviously we had this combined hobby that we both shared. And so they just went, oh, absolutely. And from then, they were my friends. So, um, yeah, so again, along with the language as well. So I was I arrived here only speaking English for my parents and also living in America. And so learning German initially was very difficult, as German is not the easiest language to get used to, as you will know. But I think being dropped into this language and being immersed in at this young age was also very lucky because um, being eight years old at the time, it, you're at that prime time of learning languages. So I think I was also very fortunate in that sense. And I was able to pick up the, on the language quite quick. And also, I'm still working on that now. And I'm trying to be fluent soon. However, not quite there. Thank you. So then you did the whole of the middle school at with with at MIS and how would you describe the experience you took uh, from the middle school? I think the middle school were some of the most crucial years of the schooling. I think you're you're building some of the skills which you can then use towards senior school. And um, as I've always thought throughout the school and that's something I've always followed is the middle school is a time for you to experiment things along with senior school. Uh, during the middle school, you can embrace yourself in all the clubs that, uh, that MIS. Um, provide for you and you can use these skills further in senior school which I'm also doing now and also I know I'm going to be using these skills which I've learned um, for for the future and so again the biggest piece of advice I can give for middle schoolers but also senior schoolers is just to immerse yourself in these clubs that are given to you whether it's a sport or an extracurricular activity and yeah you can just learn so much 
And uh, you said before that uh, you before you came to to uh, you lived in, in Los Angeles and you played football in Los Angeles, just like Slatan Ibrahimovic. So you, the two Absolutely. of you have done that. And uh, uh, now when you are at MIS, what kind of sports or other after school activities do you do now? So I'd like to think that I'm quite involved and I've always told myself I need to be involved because like I've said, it's so important that you just embrace yourself and immerse yourself in these things. Um, so over the years since third grade, I've been playing football every single year. Um, I was also started basketball, which I'd never played before. But thanks to MIS, the coaching, I learned so much and I'm still playing um, bas basketball up to now. Um, I've also played tennis, which I found was a new sport for me. Again, I'd learned that in Los Angeles, but I was young when I left. I had a large break where I wasn't playing, but then I'd, I picked it up again. And again, I guess it's just like learning a bike with these sports. As soon as you pick it up again, y y the skill is always there. And so volleyball is also a sport that I got into. And so this was the first year that I actually stopped playing football. And I decided to try and play a volleyball as I also tried the speech and debate team. So the volleyball, football, tennis, and basketball, they're all sports that I have played in my in MIS. And so again, I've come from sports which are a team and I've really enjoyed that camaraderie. But I also played uh, more solo sports such as tennis. And I found both of them are so important. I've learned so much from both of them individually. And yes, I've really played so many sports at MIS. And so about the activities which you talked about, um, I was recently voted in as the student council representative for the 10th grade, along with two other people. And so my role there is to just be a voice for my grade and really bring out the most for the students. I've also been taking part in the Duke of Edinburgh. Um, last year, I complete, well, last school year, I completed the Duke of Edinburgh Bronze Award, which was such a test of my skills. And I learned, I found something different in me, which I didn't actually know I had before. And this year, I will also be taking on the Duke of Edinburgh Silver Award. So I'm actually really excited for that, too. I also know that you've started your own podcast. Can you tell us more about that? Yes. Yeah, so um, I decided, so initially, uh, it, my whole love for this podcasting was brought to me by um, a teacher who asked me, would you like to take part in the MIS podcast? And so this was basically being interviewed by Mr. Thomas himself, talking about my life in senior school and what I've learned. And so from this, I just remember uh, hearing Mr. Smith, actually, who's the IT guy. He was telling me, if you ever want to do your own type of thing, you can just come to me. And so that's when I started thinking, oh, maybe I can do something with this. And so then with that, I left, took a few weeks, thought about it. And then now I've decided to create a podcast called The Backstory Podcast. And on this podcast, I talk to successful people, literally any contacts I have from around the world and contacts I meet And I talk to them how they came to their place in, this, in their career, um, any words of wisdom that they have for the younger generation specifically, and anything that we can learn to, um, to get how they got to their job. And so I'm currently on my fourth episode. My fifth episode will be released very soon, hopefully at the end of this week, I'm planning. And again, learning these new skills of recording the podcast, um, being able to approach new people, approach successful people. And these skills have been so important for me. But then... I presume that uh, these podcasts are available on the MIS website. Absolutely. So each time they are, each time I release an episode, um, kindly Helena Stefan, she advertises them for me on the MIS uh, website and the Instagram. So you can find them there too. And one last question. You mentioned that you also do speech and debate uh, yes. as an after school activity. Can you explain to us what, what is that? So this is my first real year of doing speech and debate. Uh, I just I remember being a kid and my, my sister telling me that it would be so good for me to do once I get to senior school. And so I tried it and initially didn't really know what it was about. But there's actually I learned that there are five categories within speech and debate, which you can choose from. So it's not just debating or speech. Um, personally, I really enjoy speaking in front of people. I also took the initiative of doing the TED talk in senior school, which was which was provided from the student council. And this was, again, a TED talk type thing, which the, which the school started, where you can give your own presentation. It is recorded and put on YouTube. And this was really what made my love for this speech um, writing. And so my chosen category within the speech debate was speech writing or as known as OO, which is original oratory. And I really enjoyed that. And it's really just taking part and competing once in a while 
and I know the school will also be holding, uh, hosting an event early next year. That's right. Uh, that's very interesting indeed. Uh, thank you so much, Will. And now uh, I hand over to Lee Kim again. Thank you everyone who's taken part today. Um, for the families at home, uh, we do hope that this virtual open day has been both interesting and enjoyable. And we would like to thank you very much for joining us. Um, we understand that choosing the right school for your child or children is a very important decision. And here at the admissions team, uh, we're here to support you and help make this decision easier. If you would like to arrange an individual call or if you want to come and visit our campus, please do not hesitate to contact us, uh, whether you're considering MIS for this school year or in the future, uh, we will be delighted to help. If your questions has not been answered in the chat, we'll get back to you with an answer as soon as possible. And finally, enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are. Stay safe, healthy, and we do hope to hear from you again. Thank you very much and goodbye for now.